The through night neutron 1A. What a flashlight. Well, guess I better start with the unpacking now. As the title says, this is the long version. So folks, sit back and get ready to enjoy the review of this awesome flashlight. So, as the title says, through night neutron 1A. Let's have a little look at, first of all, what you get with the flashlight. What we have here is a holster. Um... Pretty poor grade nylon, if I am to to be honest. Uh, I'll try and focus in so you can actually make it out. Now, pretty big, pretty big threads here, which means it will unravel fairly quickly. I'm never going to use it. I think anybody who buys a flashlight of this size doesn't need a holster. It's good that they include one. You've got a plastic D ring, so you can stick it onto a. Um, a belt, uh, like a, with a carabiner or something, or an espionar. Uh You get us some glue. Oh gosh, the exposure's all off here now. There we go. So you get some some included O-rings. Now it's pretty pretty good sized O-rings actually. Now if we have a look at the uh, actual uh, flashlight itself, you get four. Um, different spaces for the O-rings, and we'll go through them. There's one underneath the uh, bezel ring, one here. And, uh, well, I guess that makes three, huh? One here. Doesn't matter. Guess I can't count. So, let's have a little look at the construction of the flashlight itself. I'm just going to move these things out of the way so we can talk about this. Now, um, I'm going to start from the beginning. I'm going to start from the front. What you have here is a stainless steel bezel ring. Uh, it's crenellated bezel, as you can see just there. The crenellations are more style than substance, really. They're, uh, they're not going to give you um, much tactical use. Uh, uh, the, 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 the crenellations aren't really deep enough to, to do anything there. If anything, the, the tail cap end has uh, sharper and sharper ridges that stick out farther. So if you want to crack somebody in the head, you're better doing it with the tail end than the front end. It's good that it's uh, stainless steel, so if you do drop it, you can uh, rest assured that there won't be a great deal of damage done. I have dropped it this a few times, and um doesn't really look to be worse for wear. The bezel ring itself unscrews, so you can take it off. Um, like a lot of the Surefire lights, I'm sure if you really wanted to, you could you could find a an aftermarket one with crazy crenellations, but I don't see why you would need to. And uh, then you have a glass-coated sapphire lens, sorry, a sapphire-coated glass lens, rather. Um, it's dual-coated inside and out to reduce the number of reflections uh, to give you a better beam. I'm just going to pop this back on. Let's talk about the actual construction of the tube itself. Now, this is 6000 series aluminium. It's a pretty thick construction. I mean, if, even if you just look at the, the actual thickness of the, 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 the side wall, you can see it's, uh, it's a good thickness. And if I unscrew the tail cap, you will see that's about a, just over a two millimeter thick wall, which a little bit overkill, to be honest. Uh, you don't need uh, the walls to be as thick as that. In a way, it's excess weight, but for people who want it, it's good. Um, if you compare it to something like the 4.7 uh, Mini, the Quark Mini lights, they have a much thinner sidewall, and let's be honest, they hold up well. Um, so moving on to the pocket clip itself. Now, this is a titanium-coated removable pocket clip, so if you did want to remove it, you would unscrew this, then you have a second ring here. Now you can see there's another O-ring there. So you would unscrew this, basically, and uh, the pocket clip just... Well, I can't snap it off, but it snaps off. It, can't, it basically just unclips, and uh, yeah. And then you would screw that back down, pop this back in, no pocket clip. So it's removable if you need to, but I find it's more useful to have it. I can just clip it to the inside of my pocket and uh, carry it that way. Now, the switch itself is a reverse clicky. So effectively, what that means is, now, obviously, there's no battery in here, so it won't turn on, but you have to push in and let out before it will switch on. That's the opposite of a lot of tactical lights, in which case it's a forward clicky, so you just depress it slightly uh, without the click, and uh, the light turns on, and obviously when you release it, then it'll turn off, and if you full click it all the way, it will stay on and remain on. Um, the threads themselves, now I should have actually mentioned that whilst I had the tail cap off, the threads are, if you can make out, 
trapezoidal or, or square cut threads. Focus, come on, focus. There we go. So you can see there, they're square cut threads. Pretty, pretty chunky square cut threads, actually. So you, and it's anodized, so you should get a, a lifetime, really, of, of, of good use. If you can cross the threads on these, you're definitely doing something wrong. Uh, the knurling is superb. Uh, I've had some other lights where the knurling's more um, for show than anything else, and you don't really get much grip. The knurling on this is fantastic. It's uh, a little bit better than the old Nightcore, Nightcore D10, if I remember correctly. A little bit better than that, and a heck of a lot better than what you get in mag lights and whatnot. Um, so definitely one of the best, uh, one of the best uh, knurling jobs I've seen on any on any flashlight. This is like I mentioned, aircraft grade aluminium, solid, rugged, a um, little bit overkill, but <clears throat> fantastic. Now you can see here you have two almost ears, at ridges that stick out of for the tail cap, and that allows you to theoretically, oh well, uh, theoretically I should say, uh, tail stand this, which. It doesn't do just now. Now there is a good reason for why it won't do it just now, and if, I don't know if you can make it out, but the the actual clicky is a bit mushy. It sticks out farther than the ridges. But there's a solution to this. When you're um because it's airtight, any air trapped inside ends up pressing against the spring and pushing the the rubber cap out. So if you almost depress it whilst screwing it down. Sometimes, sometimes, if you're lucky, you are able to mm, get it so it can tail stand. Now, let's be honest, that's wobbly. I just, yeah. So it's not the most stable, but um, sometimes it does the job quite well. Um, it would be better if the tail cap was a little bit, the actual click itself was a little bit more recessed, so you would get a more... Uh, I guess a bit a more uh, stable stand. Um, the um, the tube itself is rated to IPX8 standards, which means uh, you can stick it underwater up to 12 feet for 24 hours, or no, 12 hours rather. No, I think it is 24 hours. Sorry. Uh, so you can put it 12 feet underwater for 24 hours, and that is static pressure so what that means is you are not going to be moving it around it's you've dropped it you've dropped it in up to 12 feet of water and it's lying there and it should be fine it's it's rated to that um obviously if it's swishing around moving around different scenario it's not gonna it's not gonna hold up for that it's not designed for that to be honest okay so onto the reflector and the emitter now let's have a look at this this is an orange peel reflector if this camera will focus there you go um light orange peel reflector is what through night state um i should really have cleaned that lens up a little bit you can see the fingerprints doesn't matter what this means to you is that this is not a throwing light. This is an area light. So effectively, if you're indoors or you want to illuminate something relatively close outdoors, um, this is the light for you. Uh, generally, my day-to-day -day use, I'm indoors. I want to use it and I want to illuminate a very large area. Um, so I can see, really, is I don't want to illuminate far, and I don't want to illuminate a little spot. And this works brilliantly. And it actually works brilliantly in conjunction with the Cree T6 XML cool white LED that you can see in there, which is centered pretty much perfectly, actually. Um, this is, now, the, the T6 LED, I'm not sure if you know, comes in um, many different tints. Um, even within the neutral white or the warm white or the cool white bins, um, there are... Um, variances in color temperature. This one I have is a lot whiter. Uh, there's an, a, another one I have which is a bit of a greener tint. Uh, my Zebra Light uh, SC600 also has a XML and that's definitely much greener. Now I'm guessing that's just a one-off. It, it comes down to your luck of the draw whether you get a whiter one, a greener one or, or whatever. Uh, for obviously assuming you're asking for a cool white uh, tint, there are variances within that. Also, the uh, voltage um, voltage rating for the actual 
electronic circuitry here is rated uh, between 0 0.9 and 4.2 volts. So what that means is it gives you the capability of running a regular um, primary alkaline like a Duracell or an Energizer. Um, it also gives you the capability of running some nickel metal hydride like a Sanuenolup, um battery. It also gives you the capability of running 14500 lithium ion rechargeables. Now, the advantage of running something like this is much greater uh, lumens. Effectively, you get you get substantially greater lumens. Effectively, your lumen range goes from 145 on turbo modes with a an alkaline or an end loop up to around about 300 odd. There isn't a specific number given or stated, but it's around about uh, 300 ish ANSI lumens. I would say not not out the front, which is amazing. I mean, you're you're more than doubling your your performance with this. In terms of runtime, you on turbo mode will be looking at about an hour, but I do not recommend keeping it on turbo uh, with this kind of battery in there for an hour. You will reduce your LED life pretty dramatically. Uh, it will overheat. I mean, I keep it if I keep it on turbo for more than three four minutes. The emitter gets uncomfortably hot, and uh, it's a small flashlight. You don't have much in the way of cooling fins um, or heat sinking, so it's definitely recommended to to uh, keep the temperature down to maximize the life of the LED. Therefore, if you are going to run on turbo using a 14500, keep it to five minutes max, folks. Um, if you are using an Eneloop or, or, or a regular alkaline battery, then the, the max is only 145 ANSI lumens, and in that case, Run it to your heart's content.